Welcome back to part two. This is what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to take the circle object that we created in the first part, and we're gonna make it be able to bounce. So when we hit it, it's actually going to move in a very lifelike and fluid motion. And we're also gonna be able to have it bounce off itself, other objects, and the wall. And you'll be able to put this into any object you want, and the beautiful thing is we're only going to need to add a few events because we already have the parent object and I'm going to show you how to inherit from that and how to create your own functions that we can reuse and recall all the time to save so much effort down the line. You excited? Because I am. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so here's the project from the last video. If you didn't do it or you lost it or whatever, go ahead and click on the description down below and download it from there to follow along. So we are inside of the O circle object and we're choosing this one because it's a circle, it'll bounce really nicely, but you can apply this effect to any object that you want. First off, we have a parent to this object, which is where all of these events are coming from. So the create step, draw an O ball, collision all come from this point parent object that's where these are so we can't edit the code inside of this object doesn't do anything because these are locked out so we have two options we can completely override the code and ignore everything from the parent or we can take the code from the parent and add to it either before or after that parent code comes in that is called inheritance and it allows you to share code and that's what we're going to be doing right now so to do that we're going to right click on the create event and when we do that we've got three options one of them is inherit and one of them is override and we want to inherit so i'm going to click on inherit event and now we can see either some new code or a new action block that says event inherited and that means we are taking all of the code and running it right where that action block or code line is. So if we wanna modify anything before, you put that modification happening before that line or action block. And if you wanna change something after, like a value, a name, a property, whatever, put it after that. In this case, we're gonna change and add our own function inside of here. And the order doesn't really matter because we're just creating it and then we're gonna use it elsewhere but we're gonna put it after the event inherited in this case. So we're gonna code and create our own function and we're gonna call it bounce. And before we jump into coding it, I just wanna explain it because there's quite a few lines of code and action blocks that we're gonna to need to put in there. And I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page on what it's doing. So when we create our own functions, we have all of the power that GameMaker does in its own functions in the library, which means that we can accept arguments or parameters, things that we actually pass in to change it. You know, when you call instance create, you have to pass in where it's creating it, what layer and the object. We have that same power, except we can choose to pass in anything we want and call it whatever we want, which is pretty cool. So in this case, this function bounce, we just need to know one thing. What are we hitting? Because we're gonna use that and determine where we're gonna bounce to and from with that other object. So we're just gonna pass in what we're bouncing and then we're gonna figure out where we're hitting. So if we're hitting a wall, we're going like this, we're gonna bounce back. But if we're going down, we actually wanna hit that and then kinda of come down like this. So we're gonna figure all of that out and then apply that property to the circle object itself. And it sounds kind of complex, but the beautiful thing is with our own function, we just have to write this once and then we can test it anywhere and call it as many times as we want, just like any old game maker function. And if it doesn't work well for whatever reason, then we know that the problem is in our function and we can work on it and debug it over and over until it works and then we have a perfect working function and we can use that in this game or take it to another. So with all of that preamble, let's go ahead and dive in and code our first function called bounce. 
So when we create a function, we can call it by whatever name we want and pass in any arguments that we desire. In this case, we're going to call our function bounce and call one argument that's required to use this function and label it as object because we're going to pass in whatever object that we collide with. Inside of here, we are going to call a bunch of different functions to get the information we need to be able to bounce. The first one will be point distance. So we'll pass in our information and get the information from the object that we collided with and save it in a local variable called length. And then we're going to do the same thing with the function point direction. So we got distance first. Now we're getting direction and we're saving that again in a local variable called direction. Next, we're going to get the length and direction together in one function called length dir x, and we're going to save that in a variable called our x force. And we're going to divide this by 15, otherwise, this value will be too large and the ball will just fly off. We're going to do the same thing with the function length dir y, and we're going to save that in a variable called y force. And again, divide that by 15 so the value is smaller. Once we have all of that data, we can finally apply that to our physics variable, the phi speed x and our phi speed y. But be careful here because there's one tricky part. We need to apply it negative, opposite of the value we got. So I put a little negative sign inside of the x force and the y force variable. Without that, you'll actually be hitting the ball and the circle will come towards you instead of away from you. And lastly, we'll set alarm zero to trigger after five frames. And that is what we will code after this. But that is the entirety of our function. And we have now written and created one called bounce that we can use anywhere we want. Next, let's go ahead and set up what the alarm code is gonna look like. So we need that event. Let's go over to add event, alarm, and we set alarm zero. So let's go inside of here. And now let's code it so that over time, our circle object stops flying and slows down naturally. So in the alarm event, we want to slow down this circle over time little by little. So we're gonna set the physics speed X and the physics speed Y to be divided by 10%, or in this case, 1.1. And then we'll put that value back into it and call alarm zero just one frame later. So every single frame, it will start slowing down by 10% of its speed. And we also have to check once it gets really slow, because if we divide something by 10% forever, we will never reach zero. So once it is slow enough that it's almost not moving, by checking if it's less than 0.01 moving X and Y, we're just gonna set X and Y physics speed to zero. And finally, we'll set the alarm then to negative one when that's true, so the alarm will not continue triggering. Next, we need to determine what we're colliding with and how exactly we know what that object is. So there are multiple step events that we can have. Right now, we already have a step event in our parent object, and it's checking to see if we've lost the game. So we could put it in here, or because we want to absolutely make sure that the very first thing that happens with this object is it needs to know if we are going to collide with something, which is even more important than this, because if we're gonna collide and we need to move down, we actually don't want this step event to be running before that, because it could cause us to lose the game if we need to bounce that object down. Highly unlikely scenario. But all that to say, we want to prioritize what runs when. So we're gonna add the begin step event, which runs first, then the regular step event would run. That way we guarantee our code is going in the order that we want. So let's go and add event under step, and we're gonna add the begin step event. And inside of here, we're gonna check for a collision with anything else that is not the ball because we have a specific event for that right here. So we're gonna check for every other collision that we could have and bounce appropriately. 
So we're gonna ask with an expression. And if you're using visual, we're using a new if block here that can ask multiple things at once. So pay close attention there. We're gonna use the function place meeting and ask, am I touching another child of the point parent or am I touching a wall? If either of those two things are true, then what we're gonna do is actually get the object that we are colliding with using the function instance place and then save that in a variable called point then call our own function bounce passing in that variable that we just saved and we're almost done so this part of the video is way shorter than the first part because we already did all the heavy lifting so the last thing we've got to do is go into our o ball collision event and we're gonna inherit this just like we did before. And underneath of this, we just have to call the bounce function we've already created with that ball being the object that we're colliding with. With the function we created, bounce, we just call it and pass in the keyword other and we're done. And that's it. To test this out, let's go into our room and let's set this up so that we have just all the green circle objects in here so we can kind of see them bounce float around see how well they work bouncing off each other and the walls and all of this that was a little high that would get us killed real quick so let's go ahead and give this a try and now we'll be able to bounce these green circles all around there we go and if they run into each other they will bounce off each other if they run into the wall they'll also bounce off the wall and we can see that if we put these a little closer to the wall if we put some close to each other and we specifically test that right there, boom. Okay. And that's it. A really fun feature, but really adds a lot of life and vibrancy to the game. Plus, knowing how to inherit and code your own functions are two vital skills that you will use moving forward all the time. I guarantee it. So, what did you like most about this? I hope that it helped, I hope that you learned something new, and that your game is coming along really well. So make sure you show it off, give me a tag, I'd love to see what you're making. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.